Welcome to Esme Studio. Uh, we have wanted for a while to do a series of um, vlogs where we talk about the projects that we're working on, um, the materials that we're growing and really enjoying using, um, and just generally a little bit of sort of behind the scenes of what's going on in the world of Esme um, to share with you guys and in a bit more of an informal way. Yeah. Um, so, for anyone who, uh, by the way, we're in a Victorian railway arch, so um, if you hear trains going over, <laughs> that's why, there's a train going in now. Um, so, yeah, for anyone who's stumbled here um, and maybe doesn't know who we are and what we do, um, we, I'm Alex, this is Jess, we're sisters, um, we run Esme Studio together. Um, and we've been running Esme for six years now. Mm -hmm. Six or seven years. Yeah. Um, we are based in London, in West London, um, and yeah, our studio is in a railway arch uh, in Shepherd's Bush um, that we've converted um, into a studio. And we also grow our flowers in Hampshire. Um, and Jess is going to talk a little bit more about that um, in a bit, but. Uh, we specialise in our own grown flowers. We grow um, quite unusual varieties of things because we want to have um, really beautiful and amazing materials to arrange with. Um, we do lots of weddings um, and events and we we're probably, yeah, we, we work half the time on weddings and half the time on workshops. We used to teach a lot of, pre-COVID, we used to teach a lot of um, in-person workshops at the studio. And um, in the last couple of years, we've been focusing on um, making online classes. So we have a series of online classes. Um, some are based largely around creating wedding flowers, some are based on more of the sort of design theory behind arranging flowers, so about shape and form and colour. Um, we have some like bite-sized classes that we've been filming recently that are short kind of snappy classes for mainly for beginners. Um, or home arrangers, home arrangers. Arranging their own kind of garden flowers and things like that. Yeah. Um, and we've been very excitingly filming a new course which we're going to release in the autumn of this year which is going to um, be amazing which is going to be quite a like meaty yeah chunky it's course. going to be really really great um, we're but very we're going to keep that under our hats for now and talk yeah. more about it in the future yeah um so jess do you want to talk a little bit about the growing side yeah so i kind of um manage the growing side um we started growing kind of right at the beginning, maybe about six months after we started doing um, floristry and wedding flowers and things, we were looking for particular ingredients that had certain shapes and and um, and colours and we, we just couldn't find them. Um, we, we were sourcing from lots of other smaller growers and we were getting some beautiful materials from them but we really wanted to kind of get our hands in the soil and start um, having that relationship between getting basically being our own producers and um, producing and growing the flowers that we would then use in the designs and having this circle of growing designing and then composting and essentially just yeah being our own um, our own producers basically so um, we started growing um, on a really tiny plot in Hampshire um, in the corner of a field we kind of made sort of a little allotment type thing. We'd never grown flowers before, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and we grew um, some annuals that year, we grew some sweet peas and cosmos and nigella, things like that, which were 
quite easy for us to start with um, because we weren't we didn't know about germination and um, how to sow seeds and irrigation and all of that kind of thing so it was a really good way to start and we just absolutely fell head over heels in love with even though we were only bringing back kind of tiny buckets of things we we just got totally addicted to doing that and then high on your own supply yeah (laughs) exactly so we there was no going back after that so we we kept we've kept expanding the growing patch and it's now um quite a considerable size we need a lot of help kind of maintaining it but um we're self-sufficient in terms of doing our, our weddings and our classes and um we grow um, look, we still grow lots of annuals, so we grow, um, we have a couple of polytunnels and we grow things in there that we protect and we sow throughout the year different kind of tranches of things. But we also have, um, really excitingly, during, um, actually during the pandemic, um, we put in a perennial um, patch, which was much more kind of um, drought resistant plants. So it's a lot of kind of prairie style planting, lots of grasses. Um, lots of um, interesting perennials that are pretty tough and they don't need a huge amount of irrigation or a huge amount of kind of nannying which is perfect for us because obviously we live in London and run our business here and our farm is in Hampshire so we go between but we're not there every day Um, so we needed things that were um, pretty um, tough and kind of resistant to the weather Um, especially now our summers are getting a lot drier. Um, so yeah, we it's split between annuals, perennials, we grow roses, um, we grow some shrubs, um, and it's about, yeah, it's about four or five years old now. So the plants themselves, I think this year, we've really, yeah, we've really felt that it's like, suddenly you're like- We've got some serious height going on. Yeah, we've got some serious <laughs> height <laughs> and width. And it suddenly feels like it's part of the soil and part of the place and the earth everything's really well rooted in um and it's a dream i mean right now it's midsummer so it's going down there very early in the morning and cutting is like yeah heaven on earth yeah it's the best job ever yeah um (laughs) but yeah so what so to sum up our style of floral design I guess it's very garden inspired isn't it because yeah because we grow flowers yeah and we are taking inspiration all the time from the plants themselves and trying to create designs that look like they are planted gardens Mm. so we just got back from we're actually um waiting to do changeover um, we're mid-install which is why we're a bit dusty yeah Um, (laughs) I'm knackered (laughs) we've got uh we've just done a wedding today in Holland Park um and yeah we're just waiting to do changeover and that was such a lovely example wasn't it of the the clients really trusted us to um do something that was you know highly seasonal um everything was from our garden and we created installations that you know just looked as though they were growing there and i think that's the style of design that we like the most yeah um which isn't as easy as it sounds it's it's really quite you're kind of taking a slice of a garden and then recreating it in an urban setting and in a venue all venues are totally different and in order to get it to look as natural as possible it's because of course it's not natural it's you know very contrived very very (laughs) contrived but you want it to look as natural as possible to really get that feeling Mm. um but yeah that's what we love to do and I think today's job when yeah, we're going to put that. some footage in of today, so you yeah. guys can see what we did.
so yeah, it's kind of um, bringing the garden to the party. It's like our what we always say to ourselves about how we want our weddings to feel. Um, creating little gardens, basically, wherever we're going. I think with weddings, you, as the client, from the client side, you want to treat your guests to an experience and you want them to feel, um, you know, welcomed and taken care of and treated. Yeah, special. And, yeah, special, and it's, you want people to feel loved. Experience. And the people are around you, you know, you've gathered the people around you to celebrate who you love most in the world. And so, um, for us, that's a real, like, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <That's laughs> um, <laughs> ever the cynic. Um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, you've, you've gathered everyone there, you want to treat them, and I think flowers are a huge part of that, and for us, I mean, yeah, I'm biased, I guess, because we do floristry, but yeah. I think the flowers make the wedding, like, they, they are the decoration yeah. for a wedding, and, you know, you've got the food, and you've got the wine, and you've got, you know, great music, but the flowers are what transform the atmosphere of the room, and quite often, like, we'll have spaces that we're decorating that... Need they really that. just don't, like they feel mm. they feel a little bit institutional in, in mm. terms of this you know the space is very blank um, you know and it really needs I suppose it's a bit dressing. Like, it's a bit like any kind of work, working in events but uh, there's something special about doing flowers on events is that you you know having that feeling of being the, the reason why people walk in and go oh my god you know, yeah. whip their phone out and start, and they're just, tra you know, transformed. Like, that's the guests and the other suppliers and, you know, the people you're working with, and it's it's a really, it's a real privilege to be part of that. Because there's not a lot of that that goes on in everyday life. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, so it's so quite magical. So weddings are kind of a, a, yeah, a way to do that. Yeah. Um, and a little bit about... Um, sustainability too so we we um, make every effort to be sustainable in um, the process and the way that we do things so we grow our own flowers we grow them without using uh, chemicals um, we uh, we don't use floral foam um, we could talk. We could talk about floral foam. Another yeah, time, I think maybe. We, maybe we talk about that separately in a different. And we, we teach quite a lot of that in our, in our classes. Um, in our online classes, we've covered that quite a bit, but we're definitely going to cover it more mm. and talk about such an know, interesting topic. Different mechanics that you can use because if you take away foam, there's all this opportunity to come up with other ways of doing things and kind of, it's kind of limitless, but it's also challenging. So. Yeah. That's that's a whole other topic we could talk yeah, about. Yeah, definitely. That's a big um, part of what we do. Actually. Yeah, we design. Uh, you know, basically it's flowers and water, and then so they've got to be in something. And um, instead of foam, we use a lot of chicken wire. We use um, uh, kensens or pin holders or flower frogs, um, as they're sometimes known. Um, and we compost all our green waste back at the farm um, and we try and use like we try and recycle um, things as much as possible and, and use recyclable materials in all of our packaging um, and just reusing things as much as possible really and like being clever about what we're using to put the flowers in mm. um, within the displays even the flowers themselves like saving things week by week. Yeah. That's the other thing about growing is that, you know, a plant could actually give us things all year, yeah. especially not so much maybe the annuals, but the perennials especially, they go through these different stages of bud and then bloom and then maybe it's the foliage in the autumn or it's got a berry on it or it's gone to seed, like things that have gone to seed are just, they just give designs this like texture. magic texture and this incredible quality. Mm. Um, and things as they start to go over, like if they've, yeah, you know, the some life cycle. Sometimes when you have a plant that's growing and it's like, you know, partially covered by another plant, so it's not getting much sun, and then the leaves start to go yellow, and like they're just so beautiful, and and we yeah. get to use all of that because yeah. 
Um, we're not buying it from the market. It's not like straight and perfect. There, you know, there's so much beauty in, um, you know, these natural materials as they age and yeah. as they decay. And some and part of being a sustainable com company is showing people that and mm. and showing our clients that and and getting them to to understand that because a lot of people wouldn't understand that wouldn't understand the process necessarily or know very much about it and we have the op we have an opportunity through this say we're working with a client and it's our one day to kind of show them but it it i think it's that's part of it of being a sustainable company is like showing other people things that they it might not have occurred to them before mm -hmm. um you know educating them about british flowers and season you know seasonality and uh, you know i'm sorry that's not available but this is and it's incredible and um yeah that's yeah. all part of it it's quite an interesting process isn't it mm. um so at the moment we are where are we we're like early july we think so. It's the middle of wedding season. It's so the middle of wedding season. So we're a we're, bit we're knackered. <laughs> we're a bit knackered. <laughs> we to be are honest. starting to flag. <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit. But we're having a week. We're having a week off next holiday week. Holiday next week. Um, so we're gonna get you know rested and recuperated ahead of basically the second half of the season. So our season runs from March through to October, November. Um, because we work with seasonal British flowers, so that really kind of defines our season. Um, and we started actually kind of unusually early this year, didn't we? It was very, it was March, it was like it was a bit of a March, shock. And, and <laughs> we were really busy all the way slow from. Slow run up. Yeah. Um, we hit the ground running we this hit, year. We definitely hit the ground running. It was great. Running. Two of our biggest events really in fantastic. March. And yeah. then we've just kept going since. And it's been a great season, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's been a brilliant season. It's been season. the best season. It's been actually. really, really good. Um, yeah. But we haven't, yeah, we haven't stopped, so um, we're looking forward to kind of getting refreshed and yeah, back to it next week. some lovely things to show you here um, from our cut for this week um, so this is a few bits and bobs that are going back to the studio it's really interesting actually at this time of the year it's always so much earlier than you think that the colors start to turn it starts to like sort of hint towards autumn um, so I'll just run through some of our favorite things that we have so this is um, a lovely delphinium this is called smoky eyes some sweet pea vines and the sweet peas are coming to an end now so they have the peas um these lovely sort of slightly hairy peas on the end which i think are also really beautiful to use um, and they have some lovely sort of pale green tendrils at the end um we have a killia this is a lovely sort of dusty peachy color um a variety of roses um one of my favorites is uh queen of sweden which is this lovely soft kind of peachy pink beautiful nandina um some oregano and a few herbs lettuce for my supper tonight <laughs> um some blackberries which are just coming through and they are um green quite small and green um some limey spirea heuchera Uh, this is a very beautiful pale lilac clematis and some honeysuckle, more delphinium, this is called Requini. We have a perennial scabiosa, um, pale yellow and blue, echinacea at the back there and here we have nepeta 
Um, this is what I mean by the, the colours starting to turn. You can see these leaves are all, um, you know, coming to an end and they're turning these beautiful colours. These sort of limey, yellow, pale pink. I really love them when they're like this. And they're so lovely and long. We've also got some stipper, um, some cardoons, some salvia. Um, a few alliums and gora which is one of our favourite flowers at this time of the year um, it's also lovely and long so yeah that's our selection for the studio this week I hope you've enjoyed our first vlog hopefully we'll get better as we go um, we've got loads and loads of ideas haven't we about yeah, what we could um, what we could have cover I think we'd like to do we'd love to do like a tour of the studio so we can show you around and um we have we've uh, Ali said earlier that we've we have we used to teach workshops here a lot more in person we still do one-to-ones but um not as many because we've we both had babies last year so we're um, oh yeah that was a <laughs> that was a fairly <laughs> substantial project so we're kind of juggling motherhood and the flowers which is a, an amazing privilege to be able to do um but um we've had to kind of cut back on some of the things we do but we we would really love to um do some of our in-person teaching again to um groups of people yeah next year so we really miss welcoming people to the yeah, studio so um stay tuned and hopefully we can, we'll have some more information on that soon yeah and we're planning a very exciting destination workshop yeah next year, hopefully fingers yeah. crossed um but yeah we hope you've enjoyed it um thank you so much for tuning in and joining us and do let us know if you guys have any topics that you'd like to hear us talk about or um you know anything that you'd like us to cover in these vlogs we'd be really interested to hear like what you know what you're interested in seeing basically yeah um so yeah thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you next time see you next time <laughs>